So here we go, part one of uh, the I wills of Jesus. And uh, we're thinking about where Jesus uh, calls the Holy Spirit. And uh, this image is clearly uh, uh, an image uh, put together from the thoughts of Pentecost, the first coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and you can read about that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. But um, I want to refer to, um, my text for the day um, is John chapter 14, verses 16 and the first part of 17. And this is where Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. You know, the Holy Spirit is a massive subject. Uh, we could spend many talks on it. Uh, but I'm focusing um, on something in particular, that Jesus um, says that the Holy Spirit will come, and one of his names is the Spirit of Truth. You know, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is referred to in different versions of the Bible uh, with many titles, because the Holy Spirit is so broad. So here, this version refers to the Holy Spirit as a counsellor. Um, other versions refer to the Holy Spirit as a helper a comforter, an encourager, an advocate, an intercessor, a strengthener, and even a standby. So the Holy Spirit is there right alongside us. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to help us in whatever needs we have. It's kind of God within us, and he's on our side, and he wants to help us and, and, and enrich our lives and help us when we're weak and encourage us when we're feeling timid and maybe sad, gives us comfort. So so the Holy Spirit is a big subject. But I'm focusing particularly on this talk about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. And you know, um, that verse goes on. This is verse uh, 16 and 17, the full part of 17 now. And um, halfway down that text, you can see where it says that he is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it doesn't see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be with you. You know, Jesus here is talking to his disciples, followers, his followers. as he So he's speaking to us uh, as his followers, as those seeking to know him and to follow him. And he's saying to us, he's saying, the world can't receive the Holy Spirit, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. What do we mean by that? What's going on here? There's a number of scriptures, Bible verses, that explain that when we follow Christ, when we acknowledge we have messed up in our lives and we need rescuing, we need forgiving for the wrong things we've done, we receive God's Holy Spirit. It's not we have to ask for it, we just receive his Holy Spirit. Here's a verse here, Ephesians 1, 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So it's kind of when we receive Jesus as our saviour, you know, when we heard the message of truth about the gospel of salvation, uh, we were marked with a seal. God gave us his promised Holy Spirit. Uh, in Romans 8, verse 15, it says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful, slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So, you see, as we accept Jesus as our saviour, the Father gives us his Holy Spirit as a sign of adoption. We've been adopted into the family of God. We're one of God's children, Father God's children. And as part of that arrangement, we receive the Holy Spirit. So if you know that you have become a child of God, that you have sought forgiveness for your sins with a sincere heart, you are a follower of Jesus, you are a Christian, and you and I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. It's a fact. Uh, the Holy Spirit is God's seal 
on his people, his claim on us as his very own. And so going back to our text, John 14, 17 says, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. If you've got a conscience, you get that inner conviction sometimes that you shouldn't do something. It's the Holy Spirit working in us. And you know what? The Holy Spirit would love to communicate with us more and more. But we need to kind of hunger and listen and be still and make space for the Holy Spirit to speak to us. God so wants to talk to his people today. God is a God who speaks in 2021 uh, and loves to speak. Our challenge is tuning in and recognising that gentle whisper, recognising those promptings and acting on them in faith. So let's press on and think this through. You know, someone's put this image of a little fire to the text. Uh, where, 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 on the screen, where there's an image and a text, I've just taken it straight from Google Images. So I haven't generally put the text to the image. So somebody here has used a fire. And, and in a way, I, I, I have to say, I love fires. I just love, we have an open fire in the house and I just love watching the fire. When we have opportunities to bonfires, just sit and watch the fire. And it reminds me of a few things about God and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know from the scriptures that our God is a consuming fire. Fire never ceases to amaze me how it consumes things. You know, you put a huge heap of stuff on a fire and it disappears to nearly nothing, just a few ashes. Our God is a consuming fire. He's so powerful. But, you know, the, the fire is, many times through the Bible, um, the fire is a symbol and a sign of God's power and his presence. It's just like the Holy Spirit, God's power and his presence. Fire came down at Pentecost, tongues of fire on their head. It didn't hurt them, but it was just a symbol of God's power and his presence. And then at other times, you know, you read about the refining fire of God. Um, a, a silversmith or a goldsmith would use fire to heat up the gold or the silver and it separates the impurities. One of the works of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin and just to help us get the blockages in our lives sorted and away so we can have that communion, that, un that restored relationship with Father God. So the Holy Spirit is working in us to help us and comfort us, but also to show us areas where we are struggling and to help us in those. To, not just to point the finger at us saying you are struggling, but to, to reveal areas where we have problems and then to help us deal with them and give us the power and victory over them. And so um, the Holy Spirit, it says in verse 13 of the chapter, he will guide you into all truth. And as I've said, I really want to think it's so important that um, we know truth today because, boy, life can be confusing. When you watch programs, when you hear things, uh, you can start questioning what is truth and what's reality. You know, knowing the truth is, is a key starting place. The Bible teaches that personal change starts with truth. It's the truth that sets you free. And so as we start on our journey of faith, we kind of start to learn who God is and who we are. And the problem there between us before God and God as a holy God, awesome God. And we realise the truth that we first learn is that there is a blockage between us and God because of sin. Uh, but then we learn the truth that Jesus was came to this earth to be the saviour of the whole world and Jesus, a pure spotless lamb of God, gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for all sins. Hallelujah. And so the truth, it says, can set us free. When we know the truth, wow, we can know freedom. Uh, I love this image uh, here. It's just this lady just looking out to sea with all that space and freedom and it says, the truth shall set you free. So there's these verses in John's Gospel about the truth shall set us free. There's also one of my favourite verses is Galatians 5 verse 1. I don't have it on the screen, but I'll tell you what it is. It says, you shall know the truth. No, it's not. 
That's John. Uh, it's, it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Now, um, and, and so freedom is close to my heart because, you know, too many people, myself included in previous years, have not felt free to be myself. I've been worried about what people think of me. And too many people today are living in the fear of others, fear of how they appear on social media, uh, fear of all sorts of things like that, which which kind of keeps them it keeps them trapped really. And yet we can know freedom. So here we are. This verse in John, which I've uh, mentioned, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What is it? How do we apply that to our lives? I'll tell you how we apply it. We find Bible verses which speak the truth about God and about us. And thankfully, people have done the work for us. And you can, you can search on Google and you can find collections of verses a bit like these. This is the ABCs of who I am in Christ. And so there we've got the first 12 letters of the alphabet. Um just explaining who we are in Christ. And you see, these are our truths. And what we have to do is meditate on these truths and then the Holy Spirit of truth. We ask the Holy Spirit to make them real to us. You see, when we read the Word of God, the Bible, the best thing to do is to invite the Holy Spirit to open our eyes and speak to us. God speaks to us through the Bible is the key way God speaks to us and encourages us. And if you've never tried this, like reading the Word of God and praying for the Holy Spirit to help you, I highly recommend it because that's where suddenly you get revelation. You may have read a verse time and time again, or you may have heard about it, but maybe there's a day that you read it and suddenly you know God is speaking to you with those particular words. And so... I can email you uh, this this document. I've printed one off for myself here, and um, and you, I can email it to you. Or if you can't print again, I can send you post you one. Just let me know. And those twelve are just a small token as to what's in the Bible to help us in our identity. And uh, for example, there is this sheet here. Um, and that is in much more detail and more verses and there's more besides but if you would like me to send you one of those uh, just here's my email address uh, and while we've got my email address up there I just mention in case um, you've got children around who'd like a worksheet all about the Holy Spirit I've got this lovely worksheet here uh, which is four-sided two-sided um, so so yeah I can send that to you as well should you like it so it, knowing the truth by the help of the Holy Spirit is really liberating for us and it can help us not be worried about who we are, what people think of us, but find that freedom in the love, that the unconditional love that God has for each one of us. You know, the Holy Spirit, we read in, in, in Corinthians, the Holy Spirit has many gifts to, for us as a church and as individuals and their gifts are to be a blessing for others <clears throat> and for ourselves at times. So there are many spiritual gifts but I want to think about one that connects with truth and that's the gift of discernment. Now in these days I think discernment is so so needed. I need discernment and thankfully I have some of it. Uh, maybe I haven't got as much discernment as maybe others have who have it as their main gift but do you know what? Having discernment helps us recognise truth or lies. Uh, with so many um, evil people trying to uh, rob from us, maybe they're phoning us, maybe they're messaging us, maybe they're texting us, saying that, oh, there's a parcel for you. Um, but it needs a bit more postage paid on it. Give us your bank details. We'll settle that up with you and then we'll send you the parcel. You know, I've, I personally know people who've been robbed of thousands of pounds, many thousands of pounds, because someone disguised themselves as something they're not and they robbed them. Uh, it's terrible. They're so convincing. 
so clever. The website I went on the other day, a Hermes website, which looked like a Hermes website, but it wasn't. It was a fake fraudster. Um, I thought, well, this is this must be genuine. It's such like Hermes. And this was a delivery that I hadn't received, but I needed to pay £1.50 or something. His, put my bank details in and I just stopped and checked it out. And yes, it was fraud. So, wow, do we need the gift of discernment? Pray, pray for God. Pray to God that he would fill you with discernment, that you will recognise what is truth and what is false, what are lies. You know, one of these, this gift of discernment, um, particularly uh, in church, was to discern whether someone's prophetic message was really of God. Uh, and that's great. It's a great gift of discernment. So that if someone's saying, thus saith the Lord, um, you would discern whether that really was of God or whether it was their imagination and stuff. So it's really good. You know, God puts in lots of safety with, with the spiritual gifts, which are really exciting and good to have people prophesying and words of knowledge and wisdom, to also bring in the gift of discernment to, to, to um, protect against fraudsters or false teachers is fantastic. God knew the need. God knows the need uh, for discernment. And boy, oh boy, uh, I think we need it more than ever in these days for our personal life as well as our church life. So let us pray that God would fill us with discernment to help us stand on guard against fraudsters and all the nasties out there today. But also just to, when we're just in relationship, when we're trying to help people, having discernment is a, a real blessing as well. So how do we um, really know that we can draw close to God and have the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us. You know, an attitude of humility is, is key. I think if we're living our lives and feeling we're independent and we don't need God, uh, we won't be hungering after the Holy Spirit to help us. In the Old Testament in the Bible, um, God describes his relationship to us as a potter. And we are the clay. And like clay, we can be mouldable or we can become hard. And the choice is ours. And so I chose some time ago. I knew, I knew that life with God is better than life without God. And, and I uh, can testify about that time and time again. And so this journey with the Holy Spirit helping me and counselling me and comforting me and empowering me uh, and wants to you too starts with being prepared to be the soft clay in the potter's hand. And we're in safe hands when we do that. We really are. You know, uh, a few times in the New Testament, we're encouraged to humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Jesus says really clearly, unless you come to the kingdom of God and come to the Father as a little child, um, you're becoming too complicated. You're becoming with too many, just too much of yourself really. And so it's this whole humility that we come in and then we make ourselves ready vessels to receive the Holy Spirit in abundance. You know, every Christian, every Christian, once they uh, ask for forgiveness, receive the Holy Spirit. But the quantity of the Holy Spirit we as Christians can receive totally varies up to our requesting and our seeking and our hungering. And so there is no same amount for everybody. We all leak the Holy Spirit. I can't contain the Holy Spirit. So I might really seek God's first Holy Spirit today as I share this message. And then tomorrow morning, I'll, if I want to be close to God and listening to him I'll need to seek him again for his Holy Spirit it's the way it works we don't contain the Holy Spirit we're needy people and uh, we uh, that is why a daily devotional quiet time is such a blessing we can start our day saying I am clay Lord you're the potter work with me what you want to do fill me with your spirit to guide me to speak to me that I would hear you and I would be led and guided by you my last image uh, for this today is uh, James chapter 4, similar verse to our last verse. God opposes the proud, 
but gives grace to the humble. So submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will lift you up. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. You know, the disciples were told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came. They did. They were hungry for Jesus. They were hungry to receive this promised Holy Spirit. And I urge you that if you desire to be equipped and strengthened and comforted and helped by the Holy Spirit, to, to wait, to draw on, to draw on him in humility, to come near to God. And he will, he promises, God promises to give grace to us. He promises um, to lift us up. And, uh, and this is good. I love being lifted up by the Lord. I, loved, I love God equipping me and providing for me and protecting me. And he, I'm not his favourite, I promise you. Uh, he desires to bless you too. So let me pray as we conclude. Father, thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit, who is a counsellor, a comforter, an encourager, a helper, uh, a strengthener. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I pray that we would know that spiritual gift of discernment, to know the truth so that the truth can set us free. Help us to meditate on these truths about who we are and who you are. To build up our inner strength and confidence in you. And I pray, Lord, that we'd have discernment against those who lie towards us, wanting to rob us or whatever it is, or deceive us. Give us that spirit of discernment in these days that we live, we pray. Oh, forgive us for our pride. Help us to come in humility towards you and we say we need you Lord come Holy Spirit into our homes wherever we're watching this come and meet with us and fill us and equip us with the gifts that we need to fulfill your purposes in Jesus name amen I do pray you'll be blessed with the other items on this playlist and uh, I look forward to being with you next month as we consider another I will statement of Jesus